And uh, I don't know, for this week, there's a lot of has been going on. Of course, um, Apple just released their new, uh, I, well, they call it <laughs> the new iPad instead of the iPad 3, which is going to be kind of kind of confusing a lot of people. And I'm going to kind of talk about that and the other things that they released. Um, and, uh, I'm, you know, I'm going to talk about tech specs, but I, I go much deeper than that. Um, you know, so I'm not just going to rehash the same stuff everybody else does. So, uh, now, uh, with the, uh, the new iPad, they're, they're using what's called the A5X processor, which is dual core. Um, they're not going with the quad cores as, as speculated on some people. It does use a quad core graphics chip. And I think that's, um, probably the best thing to do, uh, by Apple because I've got the iPad 2 and dual core is actually more than enough what I use it for. I don't really show um, videos or gaming or any, that much really. And uh, even for most people uh, it works fine so um, adding that quad core uh, is really going to boost it for those uh, two things gaming and video. Uh, it uses one gigabyte of RAM even though um, Apple doesn't really specifically say it. Uh, one gigabyte from 512. It is gonna, uh, it is using the uh, Retina display, which is a uh, 2048 by 1536, uh, capable of displaying 1080p video, uh, five megapixel camera, and LTE. Now let me go back a little bit on the Retina display. Some people have been waiting for it. Um, it has its drawbacks. Um, for one thing, they're going to have to, uh, developers are going to have to make pretty much uh, two types of software, one for the iPad 2 and then one for the Retina display because it uses different uh, pixels and everything else. Another thing is storage. Uh, anything that uses Retina display, uh, it's the apps are going to have to increase in, in uh size and megabytes. Uh, I'll give you an example. iMovie uh, for the iPad, the new iPad with the Retina displays uh, six times as large. Uh, uses six times more storage space uh, than the uh, iPad 2 version. So you might want to keep that in mind instead of getting a base 16 uh, gigabyte storage space. You might want to think getting the 32 if you're going to be using a lot of programs and everything else. Uh, of course, the increase to the 5 megapixel camera, the iPad 2 EyeSight camera wasn't that great. We all kind of knew that. It's adequate, uh, very basic video and stuff. Of course, use the LTE, the faster <clears throat> internet. I think that's great. <clears throat> and if you ever ask me, what is the greatest... Um, thing that Apple has done uh, for its iPad and I'm gonna have to say battery uh, they really you know it's easy to put in higher spec processors and everything else graphic chips or whatever but uh, that usually takes a toll on battery life so Apple really has been concentrating on increasing battery life uh, which with the iPad 2 it was 10 hours um, and with this new iPad, it's keeping the same amount of time, 10 hours. Um, I think it's 9 hours with LTE. Um, and in fact, they increased the battery life by 70%, or not battery, or battery capacity by 70% over the iPad 2. Um, it is a slightly thicker, I think a millimeter thicker, and heavier by 50 grams. But obviously, that's to offset the higher processor usage and retina display. Uh, in fact, uh, the battery is uh, 42.5 watt hours compared to the iPad 2 of 25 watt hours. So uh, it's great on Apple that they look at the whole package, not just um, tech specs, but even as far as the battery life, um, because obviously if the new iPad only had five hours of battery life compared to 10 what they had before, then obviously people probably wouldn't be uh, as much enthusiastic over it okay they also lowered the price of the ipad 2 to 400 dollars um, which always also kind of goes with 
um, schools and universities using that for educational purposes. Um, plus, with the subsidized educational discount, um, it's going to look great for these schools uh, getting uh, iPads for schools. Uh, of course, iOS 5.1 has also been released. Uh, a few new features and bug fixes on battery life. I like the idea of having uh, for the iPhone the shortcut to um, the camera because um, a lot of people are, are, you know, it takes a couple of steps. If things happen the last moment, you got to take a picture uh, in a hurry. Uh, the shortcut's going to make it a lot faster to take that picture. And obviously with uh, previous versions, you'd had to do a couple of steps to hurry up and take a picture and pretty much the moment's gone. So uh, I think that's why they put the uh, camera shortcut in the lock screen. Okay, uh, there's been a lot of software updates uh, for, for the iPad, the new iPad um, for the Retina display, obviously. So a lot of their apps um, like GarageBand um, and a lot of their other stuff has been updated. Uh, iTunes. Uh, been updated um, for 1080p video and other things. Uh, I think there was something else too. Um, oh, there uh, for the Apple TV, uh, the uh, iOS has been updated as well. Oh, GarageBand iPhoto. iPhoto was the other one. And they also released a new application, Configurator, uh, which enables uh, businesses and um, universities and colleges to configure a high amount of i a high number of iPads, iPhones, and iPod touches at the same time. Now I, I made a separate video so you can watch that, and I kind of go over some of the features and functions uh, in a separate video. So those are my thoughts on the new iPad.